three set. Sandy's at a rampage. That's going to be clean at first. Then Windsor. Yes. Oh, that's just pure damage. The knock up. He goes to the mountain. The bloaters. And the Rengar is there. What a cleanup. Yeah, going to be the fight, ladies and gents. Keepers very confused. He's the one getting damage there. There is the arm of deception. Holy. Welcome back, ladies and gents. Dito sa isa sa prestigious competitions ni to sa Pilipinas. Champre, I'm talking about the Loyal Collegiate League. Powered by Lenovo Challenge, what you know, kami ang casters ni Mayon Arctic Service Fam. And of course, with me is Rock Heart. And man, good to have you back, man, by the way. Yeah, it's really great to be back and to be met by teams of this caliber. We have exactly. great teams coming in from the Davao region, Ateneo de Davao University and of course, Holy Cross of Davao College. So, I mean, with these teams from Mindanao, because a lot of people think that, especially by history, if you're going to look at other competitions like the PGS, for example, and a lot of players that are coming from NCR, a few from the North, a few from South, Pero from what we've seen here, LCL is a great way to scout out the really potential players. And not just Mindanao, even Visayas, you know, a lot of great talent. But nonetheless, we'll just have to see how that talent prospers as we head into the pick and ban phase. Once again, this is Atenea de Davao University versus Holy Cross of Davao College. That's right. In first picks, we are already right halfway through picks and bans, oh, by the way. We already have Galio, we have Cog, we have Twitch locked in as bans for ADDU. And of course, Holy Cross, we have some really good counters for the mid from Zed, from Jarvan, and of course, for. Um, Jace. Mm -hmm. uh, first pick locked in Gosu. Uh, sorry, Kitanda opting for an Oriana. It's really great, cause, but I don't really like the uh, the nerfs that have. I, I, I consider them a nerf. Yeah. What happened uh, with previous patches where yung ball you have to uh, be right on the spot before you can cast. I think that's a big. Some people might call it a big buff, but I think I call, I'll call it a nerf. A little bit of a nerf there. I actually agree with you somewhat, but nonetheless, knowing Kitanda, I mean. He is one of the players I really look forward to seeing whenever I think of Ateneo de Davao University. So, yeah, hopefully we'll see him flex a bit of muscle here. Historically, so, right? Yeah. Uh, previous split, he carried ADDU through a lot of heavy oh, games definitely. against Ateneo de Manila. And they, we, that gave us really great fights. Indeed. And looking at things, though, on the other side of the board here for Holy Cross of Davo College, we have the Jana, the Gragas, as well as the Syndra being picked in for them. I mean, the Jana, I'm not really as surprised, to be of honest. <laughs> but I mean, with Gragas and Syndra as well. So it's interesting that we're seeing a little bit more of what we'd even see on a world level. That's right. Uh, very stable picks with Jana, uh, with Jana on the back line. It's a very ardent sensor heavy meta, b believe this or not. Of course, you have seen worlds, yeah. and you see this almost pick and ban almost 100% on almost every game. Exactly. Not very surprising, but the rest of the composition is actually amazing. Oh. Meanwhile, on Ateneo de Davao, we are seeing really scary hovers. Again, Ooh. worlds worthy. And will they get locked down? Uh. Wow, still. Ribbon, though. Ribbon yeah. on the top lane. I was thinking, I was almost thinking like, are we going to be seeing the Demon Blade? No, we're actually going to be seeing no. the, the other up, part yeah. of, yeah, Riven <laughs> though. Interesting, actually. But then again, I mean, for Gosu here, for Ateneo de Davo University, in all fairness, as far as what I've recalled and what I've seen locally with Riven games that have been broadcasted, even in the PGS, mm -hmm. based on my earned personal tabulation, Riven has a pretty high win rate in competitive for locally from the few times she has been picked. So who knows, maybe that'll be the same charm here for Ateneo de Davao University. But looking at the composition for Holy Cross of Davao College, they have taken the Nautilus as their last pick. So. Which is, I think, one of the good counter picks to Riven if you're just opting to stay in lane. Oh, yeah. You just want to stay alive for the rest of the game and be hopefully a good tank. Just try not to die and just get into the pressure as much as possible in the Riven and try not to leave her snowballing. Indeed. Indeed. That's how, I think that's how one way that Holy Cross is going to stop uh, Ateneo de Davao's top lane because I can expect a lot of carry potential from the top, especially from Gosu. Indeed. 
So, nonetheless, overall, with these compositions locked in, I don't know about you guys, Ateneo de Davao University, I like, again, I'm all about these surprise picks in a way, but surprise picks in the sense wherein my sense. That's Kasi, right. siyempre, hindi naman yung tipong magta-cheese pick na so trip mo lang. <laughs> you got like those yes, very cheesy exactly. picks that you see in ranked every now and then. Uh, wala namang sense if you think about it. Pero, from what I've seen, like, there are these niche picks that you don't normally see. Pero, depending on the composition, let's say, depending on the strategy that you're going for, sometimes it really works. And we have seen those very interesting picks. Like, let's say, even way back in Worlds, remember Rock Tigers? Bring out the misfortune support. That That's right. Work. And that became an innovation that carried uh, to the rest of the teams in world. Exactly. So who knows? It could be a possibility in this game. We will find out. We are loaded on to Summoner's Rift, and things should get interesting. So there you have it, ladies and gents. Once again, we are heading into this game between Ateneo de Davao University versus Holy Cross of Davao College. Two teams from Davao. So let's see which team from Davao will prove themselves the better double win. Yeah, there yeah you go. that's right. <laughs> a, a game that could potentially uh, judge who is a possible a good a good front runner for Kings Kudao. Meanwhile, we have a great invade, although it is spotted out. And I think uh, Holy Cross should start making adjustments. They will see everyone else is out of position. Yeah, especially kung titingnan mo ngarin, because of the vision that Ateneo de Davao University, as well as the a little bit of a roam across the side of Holy Cross of Davao College. This does give them information right, as to what the potential jungle route will be here for Trab. So within the next few minutes or so, Ateneo de Davao University, they could kind of have a little bit more of comfort knowing what predictions they have as far as what route Trab will be. That's right, and that's going to be a potential counter gank for, uh, against Kobe. What, since uh, Holy Cross did spot that out, we will see how far along uh, this leash is going to go. This is actually a quite long leash. I think they could save Smite, but no. Uh, that's going to still leave Trap with very low HP, with a very small possibility. Because again, if you start uh, on the buff, this early, this early in the game, you're going to be really worn out and, uh, compared to if you start on the, uh, the chicken camps. Indeed. That's going to give you a lot more experience. And that, that, but that only works if your laner also assists. And you kita mo naman, in this case, uh, Cinderella went straight into farm. Yeah, pero kung titingnan mo rin, ah, kung di ako nagkakamali, kaya actually if they did go for that type of start because this is a Cindra. I mean like one Dark Spear I feel would yeah. easily make a bigger impact as far as clearing out that camp of that. So sayang yung this opportunity na yun. But, and kung titingnan mo rin, with that red start, it did take a little bit of a while for Nautilus to get a solid leash on. That's right. So this may potentially deter them, but then again, it is too early to see. We'll see how it does manifest later. That's right. And it's really scary because because of that Nautilus uh, rushing into the lane, you, as you can see, see Trab is na stuck in the chicken camp because he started to get the chicken camps instead of rushing into a single target because you don't have barrels that are very powerful at the very beginning yet. So that right now, he's just about going into Wolf. Meanwhile, on the other side, na si Kobe sa kanyang blue buff. And that will open up great potential again for a counter gank and an earlier level 3 into the lane gank for uh, Ateneo de Davao. So I guess they have their jungle rotations locked and we will see how that translates into lane uh, lane control. Indeed, but what's interesting here is that I wonder if it's going to Kobe itong faster rotation in a way in comparison to Trab because of how Trab started. That's right. Because looking at the lanes here, top lane, bot lane, quite pushed out ngayon. Yes. So as opposed to mid lane, kind of balanced out. So this may result to just Kobe power farming all the way to higher levels here. Since Medyo missed out the opportunity to make gank here because of how these lanes are right now. That's right. And that's due to the timings as well. I mean, uh, if you look at Kobe, he did get all the buffs really fast, but also the red buff is going to expire a lot faster because of how he started. And you really need the red buff for those early game ganks. Ah. And that's going to be missed out once it times out. But I think he wants to make a lot more use of it. He started looking at it, but he is spotted out by Kitanda. I uh, Sorry, by JK. Looks like kind of hovering, Sorry. but will he try to go for 
the opportunity of the gang. I'm not quite sure if he'll Ooh, be able to do flash so. There. Flashed in a little bit of a waste there. I mean, okay, Sana, if may certain level of pressure, pero not really in a way because 3K still gets to stay in the lane. Pressure. By pressure, I'm referring to yung tipong pressure na mako force na magbaksi. Kill potential. Exactly. That's what you're referring to. Like he would, it would have been a great flash if you have at least put in. Like a few hits. Yeah. But exactly. he was really far ahead before he started. When he saw that Cinder was coming, he flashed right in. But and Cinder read that because I guess he didn't know he was awarded. Indeed. And at the end of the day, it's a little it was a little bit of an impatient So Sai yung opportunity because especially as a Maokai, that flash could have granted him a lot more leverage as far as Pag Nakaroon na talaga ng opportunity magsa in mag lane. So we'll just have to see, and in exchange, this will grant Trab a little bit of denial as far as Kobe, what Kobe could have farmed out. But will we yeah. be seeing a fight Ooh. though? They're gonna walk into each They're other. Walk into wards. Carly though, Trab. Oh. Kobe kind of confused though. Who's he gonna go for? Actually, does go for Dianara here, but looks like instead they'll be going on to Trab here. Carly gets a two-man bubble onto these members of HCDC, and that will force the heal from. Dianara. For a minute there, it looked like Holy Cross had a great pincer move, but the positioning and the bubble from Carly, they really, that really made a lot of means on the top lane. Did a lot of action here, and that is going to be first blood going to Gosu. This is what we were talking about earlier. You really need to just hold on. You can, you should just relegate into becoming a power, uh, power farm lane if you want to stay alive against this Riven, and that was a, definitely an overstep. Man, looking at things though. Ito yung, for some reason, I'm having flashbacks of all the local Riven games that I've seen on a competitive level broadcasted. And once Gosu gets that snowball on onto Riven, which I'm kind of worried about right now for HCDC, then man, oh man. I mean, it's very typical rank game where it's a typical, it's what you don't want to happen when you're against the Riven. You don't want him to snowball into infinity because, man, is she gonna hurt like there's no tomorrow. That's right. And uh, Riven is actually gated. There's a limit to how far a Riven can go as in terms of early game power. And as long as Riven does manage to uh, capitalize on that, they'll be fine. And uh, they can run away with this lead. But there's also a limit, again, to how much a Riven can do. So. ADDU also needs to know their limits and they just need to reel it in. Don't let the Nautilus get, become any more tanky because Riven is going to have a harder time being relevant in the team fights that are going to come later on. Speaking of these fights here that may manifest later on, looking at the mid lane, Kitanda versus 3K. CS difference is quite the big difference uh, yeah. I'd say it's actually not what you would expect uh, in a Riven uh, sorry in a <laughs> I'm talking about Riven too much in a Syndra Oriana matchup quite almost uh, a third ahead wow that's amazing that's amazing how much pressure Kitanda is applying at the same time ga gaining so much creeps and uh, that's not giving uh, Syndra a good time at all oh no not at all all oh, and it's kind of tricky given 3k situation it is a bit lower in form of mana so looks like we won't be seeing that many alters from 3k within the next few seconds right now and Kitanda is really forcing him under turret 66 to 43 now really stable at this 20 to 25 cs difference yep and this is gonna hurt 3k a bit but then again the saving grace here is that at least 3K hasn't suffered any casualties himself thus far. Yeah, and uh, and from that, there's already prompts going down for 3K calling on Trav. I think this could be a good gank. Let's see here. Indeed, knock up onto Kitanda, unfortunately, because of the lack of mana. 3K, this is what I've been talking about right here. A right. missed combo. So much could have been gained there. First of all, um, sort of a botch. Uh, explosive cast there from Trab, and now a follow up from ADDU as well. Indeed, that's gonna be the shockwave in, but looks like again, all these. Act, <laughs> but just when you think the action is about to pick up, man, oh man. The but action that you're talking about is getting stopped by mana bars. Right now, all of them are very low from the farming. Meanwhile, the rest of the teams, the bottom lane, do, uh, bottom lane for ADDU and HCDC are trying to fight for minions. 
Oh man, speaking of mana bars, though, that's something Gosu does not have to worry about in this top line when he's running this Raven. But then again, we've been talking about opportunities for ganks. What I'd really like to see is maybe Trab could kind of help balance things out. But then again, like I mentioned, as far as Anopolis against the Raven, you know, Anopolis is just going to try to farm all day until we head into these fights wherein he actually does kind of have a lot more value because of all the CC that he brings to the table. But nonetheless, we'll just have to see. I'm a bit in. I'm a bit in the classes so far. <laughs> Comparatively, actually. So far, so good. With the CS differences, not much of a difference in terms of top. I, uh, you should, uh, you expect, kind of expect Riven to have an early good game. Meanwhile, the bot lane is getting pushed in and there, everyone is fighting for creeps. And of course, also, from the range advantage, you can give the bot lane early win to Kate lane. Uh, it's a small win though. Uh, as the game progresses, Tristana's range will scale with his level and you can expect a bit as well. Uh, of an advantage. Indeed, and looking at things right here, Dianara really trying to rush out this Arden sensor as we can see. Already has the Forbidden Idol. Trap gonna try something here though. Gets the knock away onto Carly, but Carly in exchange will go for the title wave. Teleport coming in from Gosu. Carly trying to bounce things out as HCDC forced to go for the retreat. That was one of the follow-ups we were talking about. Meanwhile, top lane. Yeah, top Whoa. lane indeed. Gosu just not giving XUX a break at all. But then again, because of the information that Trap was towards bot side, that was all the opportunity that Gosu needed. Like, hey, I could go right in and go for the kill. And mission accomplished. That's right. As a Riven, you kind of just need confidence in order to go in. The only thing that's stopping you from going all in on your enemy is the threat of a jungler invade, which of course Gosu knew was not present at the time. Okay, looking at things though. Still scoreboard at 2-0. Oh, 100% all on Gosu here. But Another looks one. like Trab gonna try something here onto Kitanda. Does not get the slam into Kitanda, but Carly gonna go for the response here. We'll try to chase down Trab a bit. We'll scare him off. But no, looks like Kitanda isn't done just yet and gets Whoa. the kill onto Trab. I like the proactivity of the rest of the ADDU. I can see the communication going in because you never see them alone almost in lane, except for the top lane, of course. There's always someone to buffer whenever Trab goes in for a great engage, and that has happened a lot. You saw a great explosive cast, although there was a bit of a botched body slam. The rest of ADDU is rest just there to pick up the slack. And man, this is going to be quite the easy dragon take for Adriana the Dalton University, pero Surprisingly, I'm not as surprised. I, this is actually somewhat what I would have expected from Ateneo de Lava University because they have been in the LCL. They are kind of the household name in a way for local collegiate leagues. So at the end of the day, what we're seeing here, the team play, it's just a manifestation of how long they've managed to have been together. And it's quite refreshing to see this type of level of synergy coming in from a collegiate team. That's right, and because of that, again, with the, with legacy members like Kitanda on the roster, they have polished their macro to a degree that's actually really, really good compared to other teams that might just be starting out in the LCL. Oh my god, another one! Indeed, Let's go! Fight here, Dianara tries to scare away members of the W University, but no, that would be bad getting the kill onto Dianara. Jez. Real forced to kind of back away as a result, and that will be another casualty that makes the members of Atenea Dava University smile a little bit more with that kill. Yeah, it wasn't a perfect engage, but they somehow made it work with great positioning from the AD carry. He was able to push in enough damage to get at least one kill. They could have gotten more, but of course the uh, the roam was not right on time. Um, they were again from nature's grasp, great engage tool. You set it up and you wait for it to bear fruit, and it did in form of a kill in Janna. Uh, and that's gonna give ADDU more breathing room on the bot side. Meanwhile, Trav waiting and push for the right moment to go into Vath, but he does know those cooldowns. Oh no, Vath might get cut out, or these are three members converging onto him. Carly just making his way to his marksman, but no, these are actually two members converging onto him. A lot of action here towards top side and bot lane as well, but that will be a one for one across the map here. But 
still, I gotta say, Ateneo de Davao University is still quite the lead, but here comes Kobe. Is he gonna try something? No trap. Actually goes for the front line here, but exchange Kobe goes right on to Dianara. Jesse Real jumps into the fight here. Kobe trying to balance things out, but here comes Kitanda. He is gonna wreak havoc. Dianara might be the first casualty in this fight, and indeed does go down. Here comes 3K as well. Gonna go for the response. Is he gonna try something? Doesn't go for a full combo just yet. In fact, just gonna go for the retreat. That's gonna be the two man shockwave. Kitanda gonna continue to chase, but no, a little bit short on the mana bar, but that will end with a two for one in favor of Ateneo de Davao University. That was a really prolonged fight, and that because that was because the cavalry for each team kept arriving one by one, and everyone was just fighting to stay alive. And that resulted just when you thought that ADDU was uh, was gonna get uh, some sort of uh, slack. Uh, Holy Cross kind of just botched everything. It was a really great engage at the beginning of the fight with that explosive cast from uh, Trab. But every the follow-up from ADDU, the, their presence of mind is just astounding. Indeed, looking at things, XUX trying to defend. I mean, Gosu just having the time of his life here in this top lane doesn't even really need to respond as hard to the other lanes. We did see a canceled teleport coming in from him earlier. I mean, 136 CS right now to 103. So, again, I feel like as this game goes along, Holy Cross of Davao College really needs to pick their fights and they want to find themselves in the optimal position to just allow Jezreel to kind of deal the damage that he can because they have a lot of great front line. They have some pretty good CC and Dianara just really needs to support Jezreel all the way to really make it work for them. Yeah, just to reiterate, Jezreel, I think he has great late game potential if they just keep going for CS. They should not bite into the fights that uh, at the, 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 Dav, uh, the Davao University are trying to lure them into. That is their one weakness and the one mistake that they have kept go doing go on and on for the rest of the game. And that's just something you need to realize if you want to get back into the game. Indeed, and looking at things right now, as far as vision, I gotta say, Ateneo de Davao University definitely on top of that as far as vision coming in from HCDC. Yeah, no fear at all for Ateneo de Davao. They are they have actually just left the rest of their jungle camp uh, their jungle area unwarded because of so many advanced wards in the side of Holy Cross. And yeah, just got that just goes to show the amount of lead that they have already accrued just in 17 minutes in the game. In all fairness, oh, that's gonna be the bubble though, but there we go, Trap actually misses out on the opportunity to engage onto Adu in exchange, but looks like that will continue to bring on the pain here. Doesn't get the kill onto Jezreel, but still very low on health, so that's quite the value for Ateneo yeah. University. Excellent for Holy Cross, I think narinig nila tayo, because they just started the disengage at the moment that ADDU was trying to go in. So they, that's exactly what they need to do. Keep reverting to uh, resetting the fights, keep playing defensively, and just maybe you can get the Tristan into a great late game lead. Indeed, but looks like Gosu will get cut out here, but no, Tanda is actually within the vicinity. Two man shockwave into these two members. Not quite tanky just yet. And that is going to be the kill. Kobe gets the kill onto XUX, but that is going to be the double kill. Wow, Maokai is on fire. Mm -hmm. And that will be the kill onto the Cinderella. Three for nothing, mm -hmm. actually. Amazing play there from Kobe. He started that whole thing and ended up with multiple men on the shockwave of Kitanda. That, that, that just shows great synergy. And again, again, communication. I have to reiterate the amount of communication going in through ADDU. If I could just hear their comms right now, I can just hear Kitanda calling everyone into position and getting those kills. And Rift Herald is going to be summed up towards mid lane. Man, they're just bringing the pressure. Bot lane pushing, top lane pushing. Across the board here, that HCDC definitely has their work cut out for them. And it's kind of hard to figure out what you want to try to go defend here because as far as the defense, DC la pwede masyadong magkiwahi walay because all, the, all parts of the map here are pickup opportunities for Adu. So. Yes, exactly. Considering the amount, the sorry, not the amount, the lack of wards that they have right now. You just saw on your screen, absolutely no wards going past the the, the raptor camps or the, uh, the wolf camps of uh, Holy Cross. And that's kind of scary considering the amount of damage that every member of ADDU can put this out. So because of that, uh, Janna just has to place a ward and run at this point if they want to survive. 
any bush is likely a death bush here from the side of HCDC, and they have to be really careful. Indeed, 9 and 1 on the scoreboard. This is crazy. We're only heading into 20 minutes into the game. 8,000 gold deficit right now that Ateneo de Davo University has as far as toppling over Holy Cross of Davo College. So, it's a bit to eh, kasi nakita nga natin supposedly kung sining tanky members na kaya mag frontline para dito sa HCTC they got shredded right away by the Tanka but looks like that's gonna be a bubble onto 3k but no trying to balance things out actually misses out and this wow. may be the kill 3k does get the flash up but that will be the sacrifice in the form of trap but XUX gonna look for a reinitiate here damage onto Kitanda gets the shutdown going to Jezreel and HTDC is this the fight that they're looking for? Gosa going very hard on to Jezreel. Gets the reset jump out. But looks like Gosa isn't done just yet. Will be getting XUX. That is a lot of damage. Now unstoppable. Looks like Dianara might be the next target here. But no, actually goes to that. Two for four in favor of Akinia de Davao University. Muntika na makahabol. You could see Jezreel. He was in great positions to take a lot of those fights. Pero talagang na-cancel out yung, yung positioning power niya with the amount of damage going through from Yaf and Gosu. And that just go goes, again, goes to show how much ADDU has invested in the macro, which, re which results in them getting the win despite having the initial three-member kill. Yeah. Sorry, two member kill. Let's go ahead and check out the replay and see what transpired here. So from here, great read for Carly on that shock, uh, on that tsunami. But again, Kitanda kind of missed it there. And he was caught out of position. That gave the rest of HCTC great opportunities to collapse onto the rest of ADDU. It was kind of uh, starting to look really bad for ADDU, but the teleportation and the read from Gosu going onto Jezreel got him out of position. And that will result in the rest of this fight going into the favor of ADDU since the rest of HCDC, they really didn't have any cooldowns left at this point. Dude, so there we go. And man, I mean, let's look at the deficit right now. Actually, spearheads into a 10,000, so that's... At 22 minutes. Not, the be not exactly the position that HCDC wants to be in. I mean, from what we see here, since they do have a Tristan, what they ideally want to do is try to transition into the late game as much as possible. But from statistically, with where Athena de Davo University is right now, they're kind of in that phase that HCDC wants to be in right now. Yeah, 504 Riven is leading the charge. He is not a tank, but he is looking like one. As they start to collapse on HCDC, they could just wait out the next wave because they do have the Baron buff. Now this is going to start to look like a slaughter. If the HCDC gets caught out just one member down, the rest of ADDU can storm the gate and they have to be really careful in the next few minutes of this game. Oh man, looks like Ateneo University going to go for the siege here. Kobe actually with the early ultimate to scare the rest of HTDC away from defending their inhibitor turret. Make that an inhibitor down as well. Ateneo University really doing this methodically. Well, they, I mean, there's so many options that they could go for here. Looks like they will be making their way towards top, though. Kitanda looking for an opportunity along with Carly. That's quite the lockdown that they have. Dayanara has to be very, very careful. And the lack of wards is now go. resulting into this fight. That's going to be the fight right here. Dayanara, four members of Anu converging onto him. Look at the damage of that ultimate from Caitlyn. And that's a key member that HCDC lost out on here. And this will just be a lot more pressure coming in from Ateneo de Davi University. It looks like they will be making the call to transition towards top lane. Yeah, Janna was their one last chance to provide disengage so that they could have breathing room. And now they are going to get choked the life out because of that mistake. And again, ADDU starts to look for the inhibitor and now they start looking for deterrence. Oh man, looks like that's going to be another inhibitor down for HCDC. That's so much pressure that they have to deal with. And they're not really in a position where technically, if we're going to look at the timestamp as to where we're at right now, we're now 24 minutes, kind of mid-transitioning into the late game, but where they want to be at as far as being able 
to take advantage of their strengths in the late game. They're not really there. I mean, they've been set quite behind. If you're going to look at things right now, Jezreel only has Infinity Edge as well as a Static Shiv, not even Boots from Baby. So and that's scary. The scary part of that is Jezreel is actually one of the most fed members of HCDC already. And he's really looking really pale in comparison to the Caitlyn in terms of the positioning in these fights. And now, again, because of the positioning errors and the lack of wards, this might result in another dragon and most likely the wave from the bot lane. Oh man, this is going to be the push now. They have the Alpha University. I mean, where else to go? They managed to siege top. They siege mid. Let's go, bot lane. But it looks like they'll be going for this inner turret first to which bot side. Looks like HCDC may have to give that up though because that's a lot of pressure pushing out towards the rest of the lanes here. Yes. Again, if one member gets picked out, this is most likely an, in another broken inhibitor and most likely the game. So uh, HCDC have to be really careful and not let that Janna get picked out again. Grasping Roots is now engaged. Small consolation there for HCD see that there's no Baron buff pushing in, but still that's so much pressure. Gosu makes a play, and that is gonna be a dead Dianara in a flash. XUX is the next casual here. Trev tries to go for something here, but he in exchange is trying to back away, but no, he regrets that right away. Only two members left, two carries, two switch carries. Not to mention, ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna be indeed the game proving to be the better Davo squad. Ladies and gents, congratulations to Ateneo de Davo University in what is probably one of the biggest stomps I've seen in the Mindanao Conference. Uh, amazing gold leagues that they have accrued. Almost 20,000 in the span of 26 minutes. That must be one heck of a gold craft that we will see later on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm kind of interested in seeing those stats right there. But I got to say, I mean, the team plays, it's... It's the best of both worlds, I gotta say, for the Dama University. From an individual standpoint, everybody pretty much carried their own weight, and it was further complemented by the fact that they were able to demonstrate a level of synergy, a level of team play. Like I mentioned, this is something refreshing to see because not all collegiate teams is able to pull off that level of synergy. That's right, and again, this was home from, again, another star player of this game who was able to give us so many clutch plays with Oriana and of course we cannot miss out on Gosu. Amazing carry. He was able to stop the hold of the Nautilus and was able to run away with a great lead which resulted again in this massive lead that we have. 20,000 in 26 minutes. How many games do you find that? And on the, on the stats here, you can just see the amount of empty spaces on uh, the amount of damage items that the rest of the team has. It's just comparable. 14,000 to 6,000, almost just 7,000. That's double the gold of the top lane. Oh man, across the board, KDA is looking positive for at the near the top of the university. Probably with the exception of Carly, but then again, Carly is a support, so that's somewhat expected. <laughs> but let's go ahead and check out the damage. That's something I'm itching to see. Oh man, oh man, Kitanda. It, the excessive damage brought on by Kitanda. This is something you don't see right at the fight because it's always so sneakily snapped into the enemy that you don't see it but it's right there and those plays that's there's not just damage the amount of cc that they were able to it's almost always a two-man shockwave it's almost three man and you can never uh fall get kobe out, out as well because kobe with those grasping roots they were able to take down so many inhibitor turrets and they use it as a great zoning tool that gave them so much of a victory Oh man, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Man, what an intense game again. Mindanao really proving to be quite the contender here for their conference. But nonetheless, ladies and gents, that has been game three, of course. When we do come back, though, we are going to be seeing TIP take on DLSU once again. We have been your casters, our you got your service man, Chef Mike Asama Hawaii and C Rockhart. This has been the Garena Low Collegiate League, powered by Lenovo. Challenge what you know. We'll be right back. So stay tuned, guys.
Shockwave into these two members. Not quite tanky just yet. And that is going to be the kill. Kobe gets the kill onto XUX, but that is going to be the double kill. Wow, Maokai is on fire. And that will be the kill onto the Sidona. Three for nothing, actually. Amazing and this player. Will be the kill. 3K does get the flash up, but that will be the sacrifice in the form of trap. But XUX will look for a reinitiate here. Damage onto Kitanda gets the shutdown. Going to Jezreel. HTDC is this the fight that they're looking for? Goes are going very hard on to Jezreel. Gets the reset and jump out. But it looks like Gosu isn't done just yet. We'll be getting XUX. That is a lot of damage. Now unstoppable. Looks like Dianara might be the next target here, but no actually ghost to the name of the Davo University. And what is probably one of the biggest stomps I've seen in the Nintendo contest. Uh, amazing gold leagues that they have accrued. Almost 20. Not enough Garena shells to buy the latest League of Legends skin on sale now? Get shells anytime, anywhere with your Globe or Touch mobile number. Go to gamer.com.ph and sign up with your mobile number and enter the verification code you will receive via SMS. Log in and choose the game and pin you want. Check out to purchase the PIN with your load or through your postpaid account and receive the PIN on your phone instantly. Never miss a sale on your favorite League of Legends skins and champions with Gamer. 